So let's start with just looking at the seminiferous tubules from afar, and you see this one that the pointer's on. It has this darker layer of cells around the outside versus the inside, where these cells look like they're a little bit lighter. You see that? So the, the reason they're lighter is because those cells actually have less fewer chromosomes. Those are actually haploid cells, and so they allow more light to pass through them, whereas those dark ones on the outside are still diploid. And so they have twice as many chromosomes, they're all condensed, and they block a lot of light. So we see that as a dark area on the outside and a lighter area towards the lumen. So as we get closer, now we see that same pattern with the dark ones on the outside, but we can actually sort of start to differentiate the difference between the dark cells. So we'll get real close here. And so working from the outside and going in, working from the outside and going in, you have the first cells right on the very, very outside that still have a dark nucleus. Those are the spermatogonia. And so there's a cluster of three right down here. These three right on the outside. So there's no cells, no more cells out here, just these three. Those are the spermatogonia. And that's the beginning of this process of spermatogenesis. Those are going to divide and produce what are called primary spermatocytes, which are the next layer of cells in. These cells have a very dark nucleus. These were what were producing that very dark ring around the outside because primary spermatocytes are still diploid. Those primary spermatocytes will develop into secondary spermatocytes, and that's where you'll see the, the much lighter nucleus because now we're half, half as many chromosomes, uh, and so you're going to let in a lot more light. And so those are the three kind of, you can think of them as three different layers of spermatogenic cells. Spermatogonia, primary spermatocyte, and then secondary spermatocyte here. The one that's a little bit more opaque in its description is the difference between the secondary spermatocytes that we just talked about and where do, do the spermatids begin. And visually, we, I, I think it's a little bit too difficult to tell the difference. And so we're going to use just a kind of a geographical rule to be able to tell that apart. And so what I mean by that is that basically, if it's from the, it, this, this is like the halfway point in development, if it's anything over here, they're all going to be spermatid. And anything, and that those difference between spermatogonia, primary, and secondary, spermatocytes, those are all going to be happening in the exterior half of the seminiferous tubule. And so anything over here, we're just going to call them spermatids. And those spermatids are on their way to becoming spermatozoa, which are sort of like baby sperm that are going to go off to the epididymis to mature just a little bit more. And then that, that's pretty much it. So just one more time through it, spermatogonia, always going to be contacting the outside and are going to have a fairly large compacted nucleus primary spermatocytes are the next layer in with a much larger nucleus but still very dark and then the next layer where it lightens up is that transition from hap from diploid to haploid and those are those secondary spermatocytes and then the second half this whole region we'll call those spermatids and then don't forget about the interstitial cells here producing testosterone and also some of these nurse cells or sustentacular cells that you can see around the outside and their distinguishing feature is a very little pinpoint nucleus, and you saw that on the exam today.